Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boom, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And it's a, it's a little warm up here. It's hot to the motherfucker up here, Brad. What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> oh, if we open the windows, then it won't. Then we'll hear it, right? Uh, we'll hear it. There's no screen, and so who then knows? Bird, birds might come in. Yeah, birds. Yeah. Come in. There's a bird that lives, like, has a nest, like, right above we, this window. I would freak out. I was at a place, ice cream bar, and there were pigeons. And I was losing my shit. I'm like, I don't need to be this close to any, like any. inside. Like it was out. It was an outdoor summertime thing, and there were pigeons walking around, and one of them flew over me. Yeah, and birds are birds are dirty. Oh yeah, rats especially with, pigeons. Rats with wings. That's what my, my grandpa says. And you know what goes great with an incredibly <laughs> hot day? A black IPA. Uh, man, um, Squid Ink Black IPA from Scorched Earth, Algonquin. Hello. Um, yeah, we've been having a handful of Scorched Earth beers on our beer reviews, and they've been meh. Yeah, this one is, this is better than the ones we've had. Yeah. This is uh, Amarillo, Cascade, Chinook, Simcoe. Right? All the favorites. Yeah, 7.3. Um, and yeah, it feels like it has, it's an IPA that's black, and that's what you really want from the black IPA. You want that little bit of maltiness, but you still want... IPA forward. Yeah, exactly. And if there's some roastiness, I guess that's fine. But yeah, you don't want to be reminded of other styles. You want to just feel like it's a black IPA. Yeah. Um, chocolate covered orange, if you will, is yeah. the best kind of black IPA. Uh huh. And I picked this beer up uh, a little while ago. I had originally picked it up for us to do uh, like a Squid Game reel, and then I was like, I we never got to it. We yeah, fell, we fell off our real game. We were white hot too, but to be fair, I mean, you were coming up with a lot of those ideas, and I would like kind of co-sign and add on to the idea if I could. But like, I don't have ideas of my own that we can build off of. So, and you can only so many times open a beer and dance. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, or can you? Right. Maybe, right, maybe right. that's just our thing. We just we just dance to beers. That's true. That could we could just that could be our thing. And you know, it's funny. Um, on a side note, um. W- after I tried our beer that we made with uh, Emmett's, I kept ordering black IPAs no matter where I went, and this Algonquin was one of the spots, and oh. I had a black. I had this on draft. Oh, you did have this one. Okay. It's better in the can. Okay. Yeah, on draft it was kind of forgettable, but I feel like I get more hops in the can than I did on draft. Yeah, I'm kind of doing. This is my favorite scorched earth beer I've had. Yeah. Um, Seven point three percent. Fun little design. Nice black IPA. That's all yeah. I can say. I guess this is like, it's a play on like a, I don't know, a boy band because they all. No, it's playing Squid Games. Oh, is that what this is? Yeah, maybe have you I not need... seen Squid Games. I mean, I, maybe I should just watch watch more TV. No. Yeah, it was that. I digress. Um, what around Christmas time? Yeah. Korean TV show on Netflix. Yeah, I'm familiar. I just never watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get up on it. I just saw the first three episodes of Ted Lasso. I'm late to okay. the party. Whew. Late to the party. I mean, it's hilarious, but I'm on like episode four. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we're going to keep sipping on this. We also have a little fat squirrel because, you know, that's still in the fridge. We got. I got to get rid of... I have too many like winter fall beers still in the fridge, and they are taking up space from summer lagers. Yeah, you got, you're doing the right thing then. Yeah, try some fat squirrel. So here we are. Uh, so what went down this week? What'd you get after? Man, um, kind of a short week, but I did go to a, a real life uh, beer festival. Brad, you made to, you made it to one. Yeah, I went to. <laughs> There's no document, so I don't know. Nick made I, I got a couple photos, but you know, it's like I get subconscious about the photos. Um, but yeah, I went to May Festiversary. Okay. 
Uh, so this is the joint block party between, uh, who is it, Beguile and Dovetail. This is their first of the year because they have another one. They do the Oktoberfest anniversary, or just mm. the Oktoberfest. I didn't know that. Uh, but it, yeah, the October version is pretty much the same thing. I think there's just more Lederhosen and pretzels. Yeah. <laughs> this was a good party, man. Um, you know, it's a party for the people. It's an all skate, if you will. There's dogs, there's kids, there's old people, young people, like every walk of life is mm -hmm. welcome. And then there's like five or six food trucks, and then it's a full on block party, and it takes up both parking lots. Okay. Beguiles and dovetails. So um I really dug that. Tons of bike racks. That was very cool. Okay. Um yeah, and then uh, and then there's a stage right on the main street in front of Dovetail. So I really dug this party. Dovetail had this very cool uh like <clears throat> anniversary special where you get a pretzel a t-shirt and a beer for 20 bucks okay that was cool i think you posted a picture of the on the reel yeah <laughs> see <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then dovetail had a secret bar behind the brewery where they were doing slushies oh of their what are these called now oh the creeks the creek oh, series okay. yeah so there's a like a, a peach an italian plum you know just a regular creek which i think is a cherry and um yeah, I'm not, and then one escapes me. Did you try this three percent barley wine from Beguile? Fuck no. Yeah. I knew I should. I, I thought, I thought Alarmist was making the three percent barley wine. They made it with Alarmist. Oh no! When I went to Beguile, I I was double fisting by that point. I got a cider. Okay. I got an international cider or whatever they were calling it. Yeah. I thought wouldn't he have had two. Two Towns Cider? Isn't that his brother's cider? Yeah. But this, um, this is why we take the photos, right? I don't think it was Two Towns, though. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, that's usually the ciders they have since that's the other uh, brother of Kevin who's out in Oregon. Really? Yeah. So Beguile, they had an outdoor bar, Boat Shoes, Beguile Blonde, Freebird, Haphazardly, and No Tomorrow, which is a hazy. Okay. And then they had a different bar, an inside bar. Hmm. I, I'm slacking. I didn't get to get a picture of the inside of bar. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to get over there and try this 3% barley wine, either at Alarmist or um, Beguile. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Um, Dovetail and Beguile, they kind of kept it classic with like their standard lineups. So on the Beguile, on the Dovetail side, it was Maybach, Hef, Hells, Vienna Lager Pilsner, and then like five different versions of this, uh, <clears throat> of the Creeks, and then Slushies. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, I was on, that day, Maeve and I were out on our electric bikes, mm -hmm. and we were looking for a spot where we could sit down and keep an eye on our bikes, because we're not, like, they're still new, so we're not 100% about locking them up. Yeah, this is, um, I rode this bike, it's the sweetest, I had to look them <laughs> up, I'm like, man, I might have to get one of these bikes, man. Fun. Juiced. Yeah. I man. Got, I got a juice, she's got a rad, uh, and while we were riding around, just side note, uh, we've run into this uh, electric wheel gang twice. Maybe it might be different people, but there's like some people in there like t maybe, I don't know, 15 to 30. Okay. And they all have electric wheels. Some of them have electric bikes. Some have one wheels. Some have scooters, boosted boards. And they saw us and they like, we got, we got a little nod. Oh, man. And they just, they're just cruising. Gang, gang. That's <laughs> but hilarious. anyway, we were gonna go. <laughs> we were gonna go over to the May Fest diversity, but we were worried. One, just a lot of people mm -hmm. weren't sure about uh, how we were gonna lock up our bikes and keeping an eye on them. Yeah. So we decided to go over to Spiteful. Right on. Because they got an outdoor seating now, so we yeah. were just able to park our bikes right there. Didn't really have to lock them up, and just had a beer there. Yeah. Now, can you um? Oh. Yeah, Spiteful's got the nice sidewalk seating. I always think about yeah. Spiteful because we shot the video for the intro mm -hmm. to the show at Spiteful. But yeah, since COVID, they now have that sidewalk seating. Okay. Previously, they it was only you know open the garage doors. And yeah, go. that's right. Yeah, I'm very appreciative of a Spiteful because mm -hmm. you know it can get crazy at Half Acre. Right. You know, uh, which we thought about going over to Half Acre, but yeah, Spiteful. It's right there. It was easy. Yeah. And there, it's kind of weird that they are doing. Uh, order at your table. So mm -hmm. you, they they have like wait staff and everything, which is a little surprising that you don't just go up to the bar and then walk back with your 
glasses. I'm a, I'm I'm a little surprised there. Okay. Uh, they um didn't like ruin the experience. I was just kind of like, uh, oh, are we? You come to us? It was. It, I don't know. They didn't seem like a place that would do that. They maybe want to encourage, I guess, tipping more. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it is glassware on the patio, so yeah. maybe they don't want people walking with the glasses or moving around too far with them. And that's a dog-friendly joint, too. Yeah. yeah. Inside and outside. Yeah. Um, what did I have? I, I think I got their... Oh, I got the blue... Cubby Blue Lager. Come on. Cub, got... cub Blue? Cubby Blue? Yeah. Really? But not... Not to be confused with uh, the Goose... Cubby Wrigley blue? Cubby Blue. Yeah. That Mike Jacobs is making at fucking uh, Clyborn. But this was no blueberry, just lager. So weird. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. we got a gusher. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh, man, and there's no... We got, we got no napkins up here, so we'll have to... All right, you'll have to live with that for a, for a minute. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn it, Algonquin. All right, hold on. We'll cut, we'll cut it out. Go grab some. <laughs> All right, we got the mess cleaned up. All right. We're back in action. We're back. Oh, the beer is... Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know where we left off, but I, I had a note about May Festiversary. Oh, yeah. I was talking to... Uh, you know, they got two brewmasters. Um, Hagen is the one I talked to. He's the he's the guy with less hair. Yeah. And then there's Bill, who's got all the hair. He's rocking around Lederhosen. He's got the big beard, big hair. Yeah. Um, I think he's from Northbrook, the big hair, big beard. And then Hagen is from like the area, from like Lincoln Center, okay. Lincoln Square. Um, oh, so anyway, I hung out with Hagen at some event at the City of Chicago Club downtown. Just one of these old buildings downtown, and they have this club, and they were doing a beer presentation. I think it was like Glunn's. Okay. So anyway, we remembered each other from that. We started talking, and I, I told him how super jazzed I was about the creek and how I think that's my favorite beer from them. Just because it gives them this extra layer, and not, you can't call them just a lager brewery, because they got this this killer creek series every year. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "We don't consider ourselves a lager brewery," is what he said. Oh shit! Yeah, he said, "Um, he's like, we focus on traditional continental styles, and people confuse that with us being a lager brewery." But and he's, I mean, I looked at the menu. He's got well, there's a Hef that's on full time because you know we talked about flagship beers, mm-hmm. and he's like, I think he said Hef, Hellas, Lager, and Pills are yeah. our flagships. Okay. But then, you know, they make the half, they make the Kolsch. They got a whole series of uh, these spo- spontaneous beers. And none of those are lagers. Gosh, see, there's Bert. I know, the Bert yeah. Arms, yeah, it's so, coming in for us. Uh, a, I thought that was interesting. And then B, they're coming up on six years. They've only made 37 beers the whole six-year run. Really focused on just dialing in these styles. That's crazy. You know? Yeah, he's like, we're not chasing trends or none of that shit. We just want to make the styles we make. And so the number of different beers they made is super low. Okay. And then one more thing about these... Uh, these creeks, I mean, yeah, the creek beers, the spawn beers, it's a four-year-old beer hmm. that they put in slushy form. I thought that was interesting. Did you try one of those? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was lights okay. out. It was lights nice. out. Okay. They need to have that shit all summer. Okay. Um, and then you also heard at Mayfest uh, something from Kevin or? No. Um, but... Cheers to uh, Jack Mel Downey from the Hop Review. Okay. Uh, it's got super long hair now, man. It looks like Jesus, man. Like nice. all the way okay. down, shoulder length. Uh he heard that the bug will not be going back yeah. to uh, uh, Garfield, Garfield Park. Park. According to him, the guild is telling people that they got priced out of Garfield Park. Okay. So, so they weren't welcome back in the sense that the the guild had to split too much of each ticket with Garfield Park. Okay. And the guild's like, well, this is our biggest fundraiser, so it's it doesn't make sense for us to do that. Like you're taking. Too much of our money for us to be a venture for this to be worth it for us. Yeah, although when I was talking to uh, Heather at Beer and a Glass, I was like, I was surprised how cheap the tickets are. Where you know we talk about people talk about inflation and everything costing more. Beer Fest costs cost the exact same. Like they don't yeah. cost any more than they did ten years ago. Yeah, it could easily be a hundred dollar ticket, right? But I don't right. think it is. I think it's like seventies or something. Right. Yeah. Um, especially because if it's it's a non profit, so you're technically donating. So you should if anybody should be charging a hundred, it should be them. Right. Yeah. So they, I think they could charge more and be at the conservatory but um, and give you know, it's going to two people, but Yeah, I mean that's true now that you mention it. 
Because I think it's like $45 or maybe $35. It was something like, that's it for the ticket? I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, so this creek, the last note about the creek. I don't know, I'd really like the creek. I'm sorry. So he's like, yeah, we use um, we use 60% uh, malt and 40% raw wheat in this creek. Okay. And I'm like, raw wheat isn't something here every day. And I'm like, wheat, like, you know, like you see fields of wheat and you snatch the wheat out the ground and throw it in the beer. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, why would you do that? Okay. <laughs> and he's like, uh, because, like, just some super nerdy shit, like, because um, the Saccharomyces they use to ferment the beer, if you put raw wheat in there and you put the Saccharomyces in a barrel, after two years, the Saccharomyces starts to eat away at the raw wheat. It doesn't eat at it right away. It takes much longer. And when it does finally start to eat away at those types of sugars, it releases these kind of gooseberry flavors. Mm. So it was super interesting. You know? yeah. I'm like, I didn't understand that at all. But So that was fun. It was a fun chat. So cheers to him. Nice. Yeah. So. Well, not a little, a bad little weekend there, mm. the two of us. Uh, so Nick, we're about halfway through the year. And yes. last year we did our uh, picks. We broke these up so we wouldn't forget come end of the year when we're trying to decide on our favorite beers of the year yeah that's true so we decided last year to break them up do our five now and five in december halftime report uh yeah mid-year mid-year best of whatever you you call it yeah um and i gotta say it's been harder this year not so much that there's so many great beers but that uh, everything is good there's just not huge standouts, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, so it took us a bit to come up with like the huge standouts. We did have a couple that uh, did go to the top, and we're not ranking these as like this is the best one yeah. or the worst one, uh, but one that I keep bringing up all the time. Well, before you do that, oh. could I give a, a handful of like honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. Not on the list, just no, things that I were kind of noteworthy in the last okay, okay. six months. Um, we uh, strawberry three one two no <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right no uh, VSOR you know <laughs> right but no pink scales from Whiskey Hill it's a uh, kettle sour it's got a uh, passion fruit mango and dragon fruit in it um, totally caught me out guard fantastic beer crushing mass from Three Floyds uh, barrel aged coffee stout uh, in four pack super available not crazy okay. expensive I really dug that. Um, you know, I know, I know we don't, not everyone likes Two Brothers nowadays, but the 25th anniversary mix pack of Two Brothers, they had a brown fox. It was a session brown ale. Session brown ale. On your honorable mention. 4.8%. Okay. Um, I'm telling you, man, this shit was really good. <laughs> this shit was really okay. good. Okay. And uh, one more, man. A party boat fruited sour from uh, Forbidden Root. So that was a white peach, prickly pear, pina, and vanilla. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So just some beers that just caught my attention over the year. Right. Yeah. Didn't. Didn't break it into the list. But no. They were, uh, we thought about. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, one that I come back to all the time and I still have a can of because I, like, don't want to drink it because I enjoyed it so much was the Banshee from Old Irving. Yeah. Brad brought this to my attention. Like, he does pretty much a lot of stuff. This, um, at, like, 5.5%, right? Fuck Just yeah. a classic pale ale. Yeah. Um, and it has some of those hazy notes that maybe you've started to enjoy more and it is great yeah man um small beer big flavor dare i say like a session hazy right almost yeah yeah so, so that that beer is great i haven't seen it again at old irving hopefully you know they do bring it out again or make it again because mm-hmm. i think it's that's one of my top beers for this year. It was delicious. And, you know, artwork doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. It's like kaleidoscope vibes. Very good. Uh, and then another that I've uh, for, still keep forgetting to go pick up the bottle of, and you got the bottle, and I tried it beer in a glass, was uh, Salmos Valdor. Yeah. It's an ode to Orval. I think it came out on Orval Day. Mm-hmm. Still not clear on what Valdor is. Maybe it's a location or something. We need to get to the bottom of that. Oh, but... When you um when you take the Valdor side by side with said Orval, the thing that made it a standout was that it kind of held its own in every single way. Yeah, you know, and I was really impressed by that. So it yeah. was delicious. It was really delicious. And again, you know, I'm gonna mention it until I pick it up. I need to go pick up a bottle. Yeah. Um, 
And then another one that I had a beer under glass uh, was uh, Valerie, which is Vera's cousin, sister. Right. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> Vera is a pistachio cream ale, yeah. and this is a Meyer lemon uh, cream ale. Yeah. Uh, from around the bend. This was fantastic. It tastes like lemon meringue pie. Mm. Um, it's like very desserty, but not too sweet. It's nice. Yeah, I think um, when we had him on the show, Dan, I think he kind of mentioned like the top selling beers at uh, Brew Yards. Yeah. I think kind of rotate. It kind of uh, rotates between like Vera and what Two Headed Boy, the Pills from Burnt City. Burnt City. Yeah. yeah. So that says that's saying a lot because. A pistachio cream ale is not the first thing you would think would be the top, you know, one of the beers that are anchoring the program. Uh, but Yeah, but I think that it's unique and light and delightful. That's that? the thing. If you can be unique and approachable, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice combo. And then one we had, you had before, and then we had recently at the Goose Island Tasting we went to, uh, we had the A.B., from Goose Island and Microphone, and uh, you, double LP, double LP, and you have you say the B side, the microphone one, yeah, the barley wine. Yeah. So um, I think side A is the Goose Beer, which is a uh, what is it? It's a barrel aged stout with Chicago maple maple syrup. That's Goose's beer. But then side B is um, is a barley wine, barrel aged barley wine, Heaven Hill barrels with Goose's yeast strain. Right. The, so basically the Bourbon County Strout yeast strain. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, and they are supposed to be mixed together to make like a, a better version of them both. Yeah. But uh, people are going to judge them on their own. That's just how that's going to work. If you want if you didn't, if you wanted me to think of them as one beer, make one beer. Yeah, and then allow me to try the parts maybe on draft or in another setting. Yeah, you but, needed to do the mix. Right. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put it out the like uh, the the seven inch or something on the little you twelve can, ounce can. You, know like, you can deconstruct it all you want, but yeah, if you want them to be one beer, then you got to give me one beer because without, like you said, without that, I'm judging them on exactly on their own. So. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, and this last one you had and I haven't had. Yeah. So I can't, I can't, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, verify its topness. But it's topness. I didn't have anything else that I felt like should make this list. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I think we kind of took a look at the IG and said, what jumps out six months later? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, we said the red corn lager from Cruz Blanca. Shit, okay. You know, I had that on a night with um, one of the Luchador beers, and one of the um, uh, the, the a table grisette from them, That's okay. and the red corn lager really stood out as far as like you know how um, you know there's a sweetness and a uniqueness that doesn't really overshadow the fact that it's a lager. Like it all just kind of plays very well together, you know. And I thought that was that was special, you know, because okay. it's just a lager. But then you're drinking it in the setting, and you're like, man, but it's not you know it's not the dubtail lager. It's not. You know, Metro or any of the gold finger. It's not the classic European lager. Okay. It's just kind of this, it's its own thing. Um, light and sweet and delicious and weird, but good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Interesting. Okay. So now I want to go back to it. Uh, so just to recap them again, we had uh, Banshee, Valdor, uh, Valerie, Valerie. Side B from Microphone and Red Corn Lager. Hilarious that there's two V name beers in there. Oh, shit. Yeah, there is. That's, uh, that's weird. Yeah, you told me about the Valdor. And I was like, I happened to be by Salomo. And I'm like, yeah, I need to pop in here and try this beer. And I'm like, oh, shit. He wasn't wrong about this. <laughs> you know. Doubting. Doubting my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. He was right. <laughs> with with that gum. Oh, Damn. Okay. 
Um, so that's our pick so far for 2022. Um, it's good that we do this at the halfway point, by the right. way. This would be hard as fuck to do at the end of the year. Right. So we could reference this for when we go back in December or January as we recap the year. Uh, we will mention these again. Hopefully we see all these um, throughout the year. I believe the Meyer Lemon will probably see. Banshee, who knows? Valdor. I think they're going to... It depends on how long it lasts for. Yeah, I mean, it's only 11 bucks. Right. Uh, uh, side B will probably be the hardest one to come by um, as we're looking for it. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Nice. Uh, so, if you have any other that stood out for you or you like this year, like, let us know. Yeah, I, for sure. Because, you know, it's, we're not going to say it's easy to pick, you know, other beers, but it's just like, well, hey, if you, if you took a, I think we tried to take a, de- a deeper dive on purpose, right? With these, with with what we really liked versus like who the biggest breweries are or who the most, what the most popular beers are, right? Um, and of course, there's gonna be ones we miss too. Like we can't try every beer. Like if I, I would just drink more Brian Baru and Bodum. Like we'll just, I'll just do that if like. <laughs> yeah. So it's not. I like. I like that it's not an indication of the beers we drink the most. I like but they're that. beers that we'd want to have again. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, that's something I look for in like the top beers for when you think about things you drank that year or things you uh, appreciate. It's beers you want to go back to, that's not true. beers you filled the fridge with because now you're addicted to them. Bodum lived in that. But, yeah. Soundtrack uh, of the summer, whenever it came out. There's been few beers like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, would you drink this beer again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anything else we should need to mention or talk about before we get out of here? I don't know, man. I think I'm going to watch Squid, Squid Games now that I've got this can all wrong. Um, yeah, all right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso's better. Yeah? Yeah. It's good so far, man. Yeah. I, I really dig it. I feel like you could watch, like, a... It was probably on YouTube, like, a 10-minute recap of Squid Games. Okay. You're good. You just need to know the premise. Good to know. The games. And the cookie meme. That's the only reason I watched Squid Games was because I needed to know what the cookie meme was. Mm-hmm. And if the cookie meme didn't happen, I wouldn't watch this. <laughs> you see people like trying to tap, like trying to make the shape. I don't know if you saw that meme. I got nothing, man. I haven't Damn. seen it. I got nothing. All right. Then we're going to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, where do people find you? Get in touch from not here. Hey, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter, B Rad, Chicago Beer Pass, Chicago Beer Pass, Twitter, Instagram. All the episodes are on chicagobeerpass.com, and we should be back next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.